1841, July 3rd, formed the design in the beginning of this week of investigating, as soon as possible after taking my degree, the irregularities in the motion of Uranus, which are yet unaccounted for, in order to find whether they may be attributed to the action of an undiscovered planet beyond it, and if possible then to determine the elements of its orbit, approximately, which would probably lead to its discovery. We're here now at uh, the farmhouse of John Coote Adams, where he was born in 1819. And uh, this is where his character was actually forged in the relatively isolated and remote part of England. He was a place he never forgot, even though he rose to the heights in uh, Cambridge and beyond. But he came back to Cornwall routinely. And indeed, during his undergraduate years, he was here during the summertime actually working out his calculations that would lead him towards the position of Neptune. At home, much of John's time during the vacation was occupied on long calculations. In the family, he was always most cheerful and happy, and he thoroughly enjoyed the country life. But he was never idle, and did a great part of his work connected with the great problem at home. Night after night I've sat with him in our little parlour at Lidcote, when all the rest had gone to bed, looking over his shoulder, seeing that he copied, added and subtracted his figures correctly, to save him doing it twice over. Often I have been tired and said to him, it's time to go to bed, John. His reply would be, in a minute, and he would go on almost unconscious of anything but his calculations. In his walks at those times on Lanny's Downs, often with me, his mind would be fully occupied in his work. I might call his attention to some object and get a reply, but he would again relapse into his calculations. One of the good aspects of the, this particular area was the fact that it has a mine on it which contains manganese. Nowadays the uh, mine has been allowed to grow over a bit but we'll need to be able to break our way through and uh, so that we can approach the actual entrance of the mine. Cornwall has been formed from rock and fire and it's basically an igneous county with volcanoes in various parts of the uh, county. And what happens then is that the metals which are closer to the core of the earth actually get forced up through cracks in the granite and come close to the surface in Cornwall giving, the, giving rise to the tin and copper mining. Manganese is relatively rare and uh, it does get a great use in uh, hardening of steel. It was a valuable metal even in the 19th century and uh, if it wasn't for this relatively small hole in the ground then it was quite likely that we would never have uh, had uh, Coot Adams in the, in the Cambridge University. He would never have been able to do the research that led to eventually the mathematical discovery of Neptune itself. According to my calculations, the observed irregularities in the motion of Uranus may be accounted for by supposing the existence of an exterior planet, the mass and orbit of which are as follows. Mean distance, assumed nearly in accordance with Bode's law, 38.4. Mean sidereal motion, 365. Well, the um, Northumberland Telescope probably looks very much today how it did back in 1846 when Chalice was doing his search. 
and it's built round a uh, it was 11 and a half inch diameter object glass by Couchoir of Paris and it's set in what's called an English mounting which is largely made of wood now, which surprises people. And so this was the instrument Chalice had for his search. And uh, he really had a task on his hands because the um, position that he had was only very vague. He had a, a large bit of sky to cover and there were a lot of stars in that field of view. And so the approach that he took was one of recording the positions of all the faint stars in that bit of sky and following up his observations with other observations um, days afterwards to see whether the positions of any of those stars had moved only very slightly because if they had moved in relation to the other stars it would show that they weren't a star but were actually the planet that, that had been predicted. Things were very much against him. It was the summer in England and so the nights were very short so he didn't have much actual time to do his survey and of course the weather in Cambridge uh, was very much against him as well so cloud and also moonlight could uh, be ob obstacles to him completing his survey. There is a story that during the Cambridge hunt for Neptune Chalice was down in college dining with a friend of his and uh, Chalice reported that uh, one of the stars that he'd looked at appeared to show a small disk and would therefore be the planet that he was searching for and uh, his colleague suggested uh, why don't we go up to the Northumberland tonight and try higher magnification and see if we can resolve this disk so they came up from town to the observatory and um, they were confronted with uh, Chalice's wife, who was quite a bit older than him and by all accounts quite a, uh, a, a, a dominant lady. And she insisted that before they went observing, they had to come into the observatory house for their tea. And of course, this being England, by the time that they'd had their tea, the clouds had rolled over and observing was off for the evening.